Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new single board computer coming to the market known as the Radaxa Rock Pi N10. Now they do offer a few different variants of this. The one I have here is the Model A with 4 gigs of RAM and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. But they offer other models up to 8 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So what's got me excited about this little board is the processor. Now in the past, I have done several reviews on the RK3399. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but this one's packing the RK3399 Pro, which has a built-in NPU, otherwise known as a neural processing unit. And right out of the box, Rockchip is claiming that the GPU does support the Vulkan API. Before we really get started here, I just want to make it perfectly clear that this is a pretty early look at the board. It is available to the public and it did come preloaded with Android 8.1, but they also offer Ubuntu server and a Debian distro for this. So I will have another video coming up on Debian very soon. I also want to add an M.2 SSD and test out the neural processing unit built into the RK3399 Pro. But like I mentioned, the distro that came preloaded on the internal 16 gigabytes of storage is Android 8.1, and that's what a lot of people are going to resort to if they buy one of these early. So in this video, that's what I'm going to be testing. We're going to run a few benchmarks, test out some gaming on here, and some video playback. But first up, let's jump right into the specs. So for the CPU on this, we have the RK3399 Pro. This is a six core CPU with two Cortex A72 cores at 1.8 and four Cortex A53 cores at 1.4. We also have that NPU built in and the GPU on this thing is the Mali T860 MP4. So we basically have the same specs as the OG3399, but we have that neural processing unit built into the chip. There are a few different variants. The one I have has four gigabytes of RAM, but they have a four, six, eight. They're all using LP DDR3. The storage also changes as you go up in the RAM. So 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes. Built-in gigabit ethernet, but there's no built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You will have to use adapters. One USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, and one USB Type-C for power. We also get one micro SD card slot, good up to 128 gigabyte card, one M.2 connector with support up to a two terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, one PCIe M.2 connector, and this is where you can add your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter, a single 3.5 millimeter audio jack with mic support, MIPI CSI two lane connector for cameras, a DSi connector for a secondary display, a built-in IR sensor, and like I mentioned, the operating systems that can be run on this board are Android and Linux. They have Android 8.1 and Debian. Overall, we have some pretty decent specs here for an SBC. I would have loved to see built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it's pretty easy to add to something like this. So the base price on the one I have here with four gigs of RAM is $99, but it does go all the way up to 169 with eight gigabytes of RAM. So now it's time to get into a little bit of testing. Like I said, I'm going to be running some benchmarks. We'll test out some gaming and some video playback. Now, over the past couple of years, I've tested a lot of single board computers with Android, and I can tell you that performance has not jumped much at all from the initial Android release to the release a year down the road. With some boards, yes, I have seen a little bit of increase over time, but there's never been a giant jump in performance from the initial release to a release a year down the road. So these are pretty much going to be consistent benchmarks all the way down. All right, so here we are with the pre-installed Android 8.1 operating system. This says Toy Break, and Toy Break is another single board computer company. So I'm not sure if this is just a rebranded Toy Break SBC, or they've borrowed the operating system from a Toy Break with the RK3399 Pro. We're just going to head over here to IDA64, take a look at the specs. So we have that RK3399 Pro. This is the four gig model, but for some reason we're only showing three gigs here. And this is a 64 bit version of Android. I've tested a couple 64 bit apps and they do work. So this is a little odd, something that definitely needs to be fixed. We got the four little cores at 1.4, the two big cores at 1.8 for a total of six, and the Mali T860 OpenGL ES 3.2. Unfortunately, there's no Vulkan support with this build of Android. That's something that definitely needs to be addressed. That's one of the main selling points of this chip. So first things first, let's get into some benchmarks. The first one here is known as AI Benchmark. It does some image recognition. We scored a 3,639. The main reason I ran this first was because I wanted to find out if that NPU was working inside of this version of Android. And unfortunately, I don't think it is because I ran the same benchmark on the Nano PC T4, which has the OG RK3399 
and we scored a 3,241. Yes, the N10 did beat it out, but not by much, so we're not working with that NPU inside of this version of Android at least. This is all relying on the CPU itself. Next on the list is Geekbench 4, single core, 1260, multi, 2876, also ran on the Nano PC T4, single core, 1362, Multi, 3094, these are right on par with each other. I know the T4 beat it out for this test, but if I ran these several times, we could match each other here. So the way it's looking right now, the Pro version of the 3399 has nothing over the OG version of the 3399, except for that built-in NPU, and in Android, we just can't use it yet. Next up, we have Antutu. On the N10, we scored a 117,903. On the Nano PC T4, 116,844, so these are still right on par with each other. And finally, a GPU-intensive test, Slingshot Extreme. Overall score for OpenGL ES 3.1, 856. On the Nano Pi T4, 930. Vulkan is not enabled in this version of Android, so it wouldn't even run that test. Performance here with Android is exactly the same as the RK3399. I have run into some issues. I did a lot of testing. I took a break and I decided to wrap this video up now. Unfortunately, I'm not getting any sound out of HDMI or the audio jack, no matter what I try. I've tested several speakers, several displays, HDMI cables. I can't get sound working with this included version of Android. Next on the list, which isn't a deal breaker, but it is a bit annoying, I can't get Wi-Fi to work using any of the dongles I own. I got four of them, and I have one that works on every single board computer that I've ever tested with Android, but it's not being detected with this one. Like I said, it's not a deal breaker. I have to use Ethernet here, but it should work. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I know I stated I was going to test some video playback and gaming, but performance is the same as the original RK3399. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave some links in the description. I've tested about six different boards with that chip. I'm definitely a little bit annoyed here. Uh, I would have loved to at least test some 4K video playback. And while it does look pretty decent, 60 FPS, 4K, one of the harder ones I test on these boards, there's really no way to tell because I don't have audio. So I think the best bet would be either wait for a different release of Android or just install Debian on here and do a whole nother video. But I've already put a lot of time into this one and I just didn't want to scrap it because this is the performance you're going to see if you buy it right now and leave the stock Android on it. So that's it for this one guys. The software definitely needs some work. I will be doing a video on Debian very soon so stay tuned to the channel. Hopefully we have better luck with that one. If you're interested in at least taking a look at these I'll leave some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.